Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin lecturing Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate a z-score by hand. So before we start, let's take a look at some data. Let's say a food manufacturer has made a claim that their 1 kilogram or 1,000 uh, gram uh, bags of food weigh at least 1,000 grams or more. So I'm going to make an inference about that uh, population by taking a sample. So in this particular case here, I have measured 14 uh, bags of food um, uh, as a sample, and I'm going to make an inference about the population based on this sample. So first off, let's uh, uh, specify our null and alternative hypothesis. My null hypothesis, HO, is that mu, the population mean, is greater than or equal to 1,000 as claimed by the manufacturer. And the alternative hypothesis, the one that I'm testing, H1, is that mu, the population mean, is less than 1,000 grams. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a formula for z-score. My formula is as follows. z is equal to, and it's got four components, um, x-bar, which is the um, sample mean, so I'm going to have to calculate that now in a moment, minus mu, which is the population mean. Now, that's going to be 1,000 in this case here divided by the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of the size of the population. Now, these last two bits, we don't know. We don't know the population standard deviation, and we don't know the population size, so we're going to substitute the sample standard deviation and the sample size in here. And the sample size is, of course, going to be 14. So first off, let's calculate the mean. When I add up all of these numbers here, I get a value of 13,947. And when I divide that by n, which is 14, I get a value of x bar equal to um, 996.21. So now I've got three out of my four components in my formula. I've got x bar, 996.21, minus mu, which is 1,000, divided by the standard deviation over the square root of 14. Next thing I need to do is to calculate the sample standard deviation. And the formula that I'm going to use here is as follows. My sample standard deviation, S, is equal to the square root of all of the sum of all of the x minus x bar, which we've just calculated, squared, divided by n minus 1. n minus 1 is going to be 14 minus 1 and 13. So our steps here is we need to work out x minus x bar and square that value for each of our values of x here. So let's go ahead and do that for the first value. I want to put in my column here x minus x bar, and in the column beside it, x minus x bar squared. You could do these, these together, but I'm just separating them for illustration purposes. So my first value of x is 1001, so put that in my calculator. 1001 minus my value of the mean, 996.21. That gives me a result of 4.79. And while I have that on my calculator, I'm going to square it and that gives me a value of 22.94. My next value is 1003. So 1003 minus the mean 996.21 is equal to 6.79. And while that's on my calculator, I'm going to square it to give me 46.10. And my task now is to do that for each of the values of x here. So keep working down calculating x minus x bar and then squaring each of those values until we get we reach the last line down here. So here's what that will look like when you've worked it all out. You can see I've worked out each value for x minus x bar, and then I've worked out at the square of each of those, so as I have completed it for all values of x. When I add up all of these values here, I get a total of 414.2. So but that's just a simple addition of all of these values here. So that's the sum of x minus x bar squared. And now my formula for my standard deviation is equal to the square root of the sum of all of the x minus x bar squared, which is 414.36, divided by n minus 1, which is 14 minus 1, which is 13. So let's work that out. 414.36. Point three six divided by 13 is equal to 31.87. And take the square root of that, um, using my calculator, take the square root, I get a result of 5.64. 
So I've now worked out the sample standard deviation and I now can plug that value into my formula up here. So let's on the right hand side go ahead and do that. So Z is going to be equal to X bar, which is 996.21, minus the population mean, which is 1000. I'm going to divide that by the standard deviation we've just calculated, that's 5.64, divided by the square root of 14. So let's go ahead and start working out bits of this. Let's get this out of the light. So 996.21 minus 1000 is equal to minus 3.79. And that's going to be divided by 5.64. Let's work out the square root of 14. 14 square root is 3.74 which is equal to 3.79 divided by, let's work out 5.64 divided by 3.74, that's equal to 1.51. And when I do that final sum there, and just do um, 3.79, make it a minus, um, divided by 1.51 and that gives me a result of minus 2.51 rounded. So my Z value is minus 2.51. Now what do I do with that value? Well first off I'm going to go down to my uh, distribution diagram down here on the bottom left hand corner with my hypothesis and so on. I'm going to use an alpha value of 0.05. And when I use an alpha value of 0 0.05, um, my critical scores for Z, um, and as I've got a, a minus value here, I'm going to be in the left tail, my critical score is minus 1.645. So any value to the left of that falls into the reject area. And my Z score is has a value of minus 2.51, we've just calculated. And that falls to the left of the critical value, which means it falls into the reject region, which means I can reject the null hypothesis, which states that the population mean is greater than or equal to 1,000 grams. So in this instance here, I have what I have found is that my sample of all my values here is showing that the average weight of the packages, according to these measures here, is actually less than 1,000 grams. So that's how you calculate and use a Z-score uh, by hand. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.